This is a river in British Columbia that we found just really by doing some research on the internet, uh, watching some YouTube videos, and uh, a little bit of uh, calling around, and then some map research, of course, uh, and just, hey, we let's give it a try. So we did. We just uh, went driving and found it and got out and started walking and you know, we had done a little bit of research to see that we had some ideas that there'd be some good fishing around, uh, but really weren't sure. So um, this was August, so we were expecting possibly to use some terrestrials, uh, maybe some mayflies, um, and so we just started working uh, this first hole that we came to with those. You can see there's some nice uh, riffle coming in. I mean, it's not a heavy riffle, really light riffle, but some flow. Uh, coming in and then uh, darkens up and deepens up in here. And then um, there's actually some decent current uh, that's supposed to be in the water still that works its way all the way down along the edge of this hole. And then out in here, it's, you know, it's deep, probably about as deep as this uh, river got where we fished it and um, slows down quite a bit all the way around um, this log area. It's all real deep, real slow. And, um, but we, we started here because this was just kind of the typical water out in here. And we did um, catch a couple small ones up in here. Uh, we got some rises along this edge, uh, but just um, didn't do a lot of hookups, but we did see some fish and had some opportunities. So definitely a, a good area to fish. So we fished this area for quite a while and and like i said missed mostly missed fish but did catch a couple of small ones and i didn't say this earlier but this um was august but it was a very cool august day we're in of course bridge columbia so the weather can be you know cool anytime uh, but it was probably in the low 70s and maybe even in the upper 60s and fairly cloudy this area over here, we saw some fish rise, but it was really difficult to get to casting. All of this area out in here was really slow. Uh, it was fairly deep, so I couldn't get too much further out from uh, where I was. And uh, so it was difficult to get a good drift. We tried from where Ladin was, getting a downstream mend as far as we could go. Uh, but again, it was just difficult. So uh, we saw a couple fish rise out in this slow water and the only flies i could see were tiny little flies that were pretty dark and i couldn't quite tell what they were so i was guessing maybe blue winged olive even though it was august and it was cloudy and it was cool so i thought why not give it a try so i put on a, an adult uh, blue winged olive pattern and i put it out there and tried and didn't get any hits for a while and then i thought well it's slow. I know there's fish rising. I'll just let it sit. So we would throw out here, throw it out in front of me, just really slow so that the fly wasn't in any of the faster water. Uh, mend if I needed to, to keep it there. And it really did just kind of sit there. And, and sometimes it would take, uh, you know, a couple minutes of sitting there, which is an eternity in fly fishing uh, for, you know, when you're fishing a river like this. And uh, eventually, sure enough, a fish rose took my fly and I caught a nice cutthroat and I caught another one this way and missed a couple. So what I learned here is one, um, just try something different. I've been fishing for 40 years and this is, I can't really say that I think I've ever done this where I just let a dry fly sit out in a hole, not really moving at all for this length of a time. I've done it with nymphs um, and things like that, but um, not with a dry fly that I can think of and really no motion at all, none, just sitting there. Um, not even a twitch or anything like that. So it worked. I caught a couple fish, and uh, it was something different that I hadn't done before. I was casting upstream of Steve into the head of the pool. Meanwhile, Steve was down in the tail out catching all the fish. Yeah, another one. It's a little guy this time. All right. This was just kind of right out in the middle of that slow stuff. Came up and hit it. Pretty cool. 
Yeah, that's a decent fish. Yeah, it's about the same as the last one. Yeah. Nice. nice. Yeah. Darker color to him. It's a nice, nice cutthroat trout. A little darker than the last one, but about the same size. There you go. This was the next hole that we came to, and again, you really can't call it a hole. It's really just a short run, and and it's a fairly shallow run too. We really. I probably would have walked past this if I hadn't seen a fish rise. So when I walking up to this, saw fish rise in this area, and so I'd give it a try. It was small, but we thought, you know, why not give it a try? And right about that same time, I see flying, and it comes close. It lands in the water, a big fly. So of course we got to take a look at it, and it's a, a pretty good sized golden stone. I, I, I am able to catch it, look at it. It's very uh, dark bodied. It does have some yellow, but a lot of brown in it. And then um, a very dark uh, brown wing. So I look through my fly box. I do have something that looks like that. It's a golden stone pattern that's darker than, than most of them that I have. Put it on and uh, fish my way out. So I start working my way towards where I saw that uh, fish rise. And uh, probably about the third cast on this run, uh, this uh, line, I have a fish come up and take it and catch a small one. And we caught a couple small ones out of here. You can see from this and maybe the other one too, but um, that this is obviously very, very clear water, um, shallow. And so in a situation like this, typically, unless I think I've got really big fish in here, I'm going to be using 5X tippet for something like this small clear and uh, using it well for this dry it was not a small uh, dry fly but with the blue winged olive it was so typically i would use a nine foot leader in a situation like this with 3x at the end of that and then i would put um, a, a section of 4x tippet on and then a section of 5x tippet uh, using a double surgeon's knot and uh, that's what i was doing here Yeah. That was a pretty cool take. <laughs> cool. Yeah. That was a cool take. It's not a bad one. Got him. Flies out. Beautiful cutthroat. The fly I used to catch that last fish is a golden stone uh, imitation, a, a yellow stimulator basically. And uh, why I put that on is I, I found a stone fly flying across the water. I was able to look at it and uh, it had a yellow and dark underbody. So I tried to pick this fly out to match that and sure enough, I caught a fish with it. We moved up river and Ladin looked at this spot and he goes, I got to try this. You know, it's like you just, from where I was looking, it didn't look that great. But um, as you'll see from the next view, from where he was looking, as he got up closer, it looked even better. He worked his way up to this spot, fishing this area. But what he was really searching for was this spot right in here. You can see his fly um, is right there and he's about ready to catch a fish um, that probably was hiding under this log. Uh, he did he worked his way out to this spot, uh, casting, getting out, and then finally, um, you know, hooked the fish right in there. This is kind of a fun place and uh, something to think about when you're fishing, and particularly for cutthroats, but brown trout, any trout really. Uh, this is kind of a, a, a spot I think that a lot of people might walk by. It's not a traditional hole. Um, but there is enough water here and there's enough cover here to give it a try. If you don't catch anything, you don't catch anything, but oftentimes um, you do. And this turned out to be, I think, the biggest fish that we caught um, this day. So it's pretty cool. And um, it's, it's fun to catch a fish um, anywhere, of course, but it's also kind of cool when you maybe you think that this is a spot that might be overlooked and um, other people might not have fished.
I'm going to try right over by that log. Sometimes a fish like that structure. Yeah, it's a good fish too. Very nice fish. Nice. Cool, yeah, it was right out from under that log, just about where I expected it to be, which is cool. It's a little nicer fish. I'm trying to keep it heading upstream here. Oh yeah, that's a beauty. Yeah, it's a beautiful fish. Beautiful fish, right by that log. Boy, it's hard fighter. Yeah. They really nose down, don't they? Oh yeah, gorgeous trout. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Good call. Yeah, thanks. I would have jumped right by that thing. Yeah, big fatty, big cutthroat. Here's a view from just upstream and behind where Ladin caught this fish. And you can tell, although it's a little blurry, I apologize for that, that um, why that fish was in there. Um, there is actually a little more water here than it looks like from below. There's a decent amount of current coming in, definitely would bring in some nice food supply. Um, and you know, you can see that it deepens up just a slightly in here. And then you've got a really nice dark resting area along there. So uh, somewhere the line he's gonna to be casting into here probably a little higher floating along there and that fish is taking it right in that area so um, just a cool little spot easy to pass by it definitely worth a try if you see something like this and uh, usually a hole like this or a spot like this you really can't call it a hole but a spot like this is kind of a one and done type thing typically just one fish in there hiding um, not always but a lot of times that is the case this is the last hole that we came to as we worked our way upriver. We dry, drove in a road, got fairly close to the river, hit the river, and decided to go upstream. We really don't have a preference one way or the other going up or down. It just, this particular spot looked good upstream, so we just started working our way up. Uh, we worked our way up as far as we thought we could go before we needed to turn around and work our way back down before it got dark. And, and we really, again, there's no particular reason to go upstream or downstream that I know of other than if it looks good one way or the other. That being said, if I had equally good water upstream and downstream, I, I feel like I would usually pick the going upstream. It's just working upriver oftentimes seems a good way to go, but it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that. It's just my tendency. I know a lot of times I've been very successful working my way downstream. Um, so it just, um, that's what we did on this particular uh, river, just because that's the way it worked out. And um, this hole, we spent quite a bit of time in. We probably got to this hole about three o'clock in the afternoon, and it was a cloudy day. We saw some blue winged olives coming off, and I think we got there at the fairly uh, start of a hatch. And uh, we saw some fish rising out in this uh, faster water. There's some nice rocks in here, uh, maybe a foot and a half to two feet in depth. And uh, we did pretty well right in here. We didn't catch any really big fish out of this run, but caught a lot of um, decent and small fish in here on blue winged olives. And then the fishing started slowing down. I, I guess before before I finish with that, the, the fish were rising, or before I move on to that next one, um, the fish were rising in here probably because the blue-winged olives tend to hatch in a little bit faster water in the riffle, and I think they were you know, picking them up right as they were hatching and getting up to the surface. We did have some uh, fish take flies down in here, and uh, but they just weren't as active. And of course, the, the adult flies will float on the water, you know, they'll float down into these areas. And, and again, there were fish and probably some of the bigger fish were down in there. Uh, but uh, we uh, missed a couple and um, did better just up in this um, top water area, the faster water. Then um, the fishing slowed down. We weren't catching on blue winged olives anymore. And we noticed, uh, again, just kind of being aware of what you're seeing out there. We saw some different mayflies, some larger ones that were grayish in color. And we thought, okay, let's try um, an Adams. And we did. We switched to Adams and immediately started catching some more fish. 
uh, similar. A lot of them were up in the top area, but we did get some more rises. And you can see, I mean, it deepens up in here. It slows down just a little bit, although there's 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 good current along the far shore. And um, then along here too, there's some kind of some little back eddies. There's a lot of cover, lots of uh, logs and branches. And um, I I am almost certain there are bigger fish lying in there uh, that we weren't, didn't catch on this particular trip. Uh, but it just looked like really good water. Again, we did catch some on uh, the blue-winged olives and then switched over to the atoms all through, and we we caught fish um, and, and saw fish rise all the way down and through here too. So this turned out to be our best hole. We spent quite a bit of time here, and we that's why we ended up turning around here and heading back down river, working our way down. So on our way upstream through the early part of the day, very early, we, we had blue-winged olives in that first hole. And we tried terrestrials, uh, didn't do too much um, until we saw the golden stone. We used the golden stone. Um, then I think we went uh, the the lat the fish Latin caught in that hole previously. I believe was on some kind of a terrestrial pattern. Then we got back uh, in the afternoon to blue winged olives hatching again. We hit those. Then the the hatch switched to the mayfly, and that's what we kind of finished out the day with was uh, catching them on the mayfly. So again, just um, be watching, be observant, see what's hatching, unless you know the hatches. If you've been on the river, obviously you might know that. Otherwise, you got to observe what's going on. Try and match the hatch as it's coming off. Be willing to switch if things slow down. Even if you do see the same bug hatching, if you stop catching fish on what you're using, switch to something else, a different version of that fly or a different fly um, altogether. Got one. Lad. Oh yeah. Nice. What was that on? Uh the kind of an Adams, a bluer Adams. It's a pretty decent feeling fish. I haven't even really seen it yet, but it's just digging down deep. Trying to dig down. Yeah. Yeah, I've had two strikes already on this fly. Wow. Looks like a decent fish. Yeah. And it was just right here in the shallow That's stuff. where I saw that one rise, too. Huh. Beauty. Yeah, really nice. Yeah. Woo. Awesome. Gorgeous. Gorgeous fish. Boy, that's a nice trout right there. That's gorgeous. Yeah, I think that's the biggest of the day for me. Mm -hmm. Maybe 14, huh? Yeah. It's beauty. Here he goes. <laughs> yeah, I'd say we maybe get a little bit of a hatch going on. I'm not sure what's hatching, but it's great because they're starting to look up more. Got a nice uh, kind of Adams-like mayfly on here, and uh, that fish was a beauty. I caught that fish on uh, an Adams-type imitation. It's not your standard Adams or your parachute Adams, but kind of a bent wing. The, the body's more blue-gray, and then it has these golden pheasant tippets on it on the tail. They like